nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Hello, Nashville fans. I'm not Amy Brown. I'm Marshall Herskovitz, and I'm the showrunner of Nashville. And we've taken over Nash Chat tonight to talk to you about how we make the show, how, where we come up with these stories. I've got my wonderful writers here. We're glad you're joining us. This is Nash Chat, and we are live. Woo! Woo! Okay, so we're back, and I'm Marshall Herskovitz again, and I'm with several of the wonderful writers from our show, Savannah Dooley, Scott Sococcio, Jeffrey Nofts, and um, there's a, several others who couldn't be here tonight who we want to shout out later because it's a wonderful team. And we thought we'd talk to you tonight about how we do this show, like we, where we come up with these ideas and how it gets written. And um, so... Why don't you guys sort of jump in? Talk a little bit about what the writer's room is like. Uh, it's a really, really fun room. Uh, Very fun. <laughs> we, you know, a, a lot of times, you know, we'll share personal experiences as it may relate to the story that we're trying to tell. Uh, if, you know, because if, if one of us says something that sparks an idea for somebody else, you know, that can be gold. Mm -hmm. um, we, we go off each other. We, uh, um, I'm blinking here. <laughs> we, Jeff, you take it. We sometimes we'll start at, at the beginning of a season and we'll kind of map out what we what the themes are for the season and where we want to go potentially with every character. So we'll we'll start long, you know, high up, and then we'll kind of hone in on each character and get more specific with each character and the journey they're going to potentially go on um, during the year, and of course it's all subject to change. It's, it's hard, too, because there are a lot of characters on this show, and we want to do all of them justice, and we want the stories to weave together, yeah. mm -hmm. and it's like uh, three-dimensional chess sometimes. Um, also, you know, there was a change this year in the way we do the stories. We decided we wouldn't try to tell as many stories in each episode, and therefore you know, sometimes you'll have a story where, for instance, Juliet is very heavy in the episode, and then the next episode, she's not that heavy, and we hear from the Javery fans a lot about that, and we felt that it was important if we were going to really tell deeper stories, more emotional stories about each character. Yeah, a lot of stories it, to breathe. Yes, exactly. Yeah. You, sometimes you had to wait. I mean, you know, uh, I'm a big fan of Game of Thrones, and if there's an episode and Arya's not in it, I get upset, but I know she's going to be in the next one. And so, you know, it's a trade-off. But, but we feel that this way we can go deeper into what's really going on with these characters. And also I want to remind everyone who's watching, please send us your questions because we're going to answer them and we're going to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so at any rate, um, you know... Um, it, it's, it's, it's really been fun this year, I have to tell you. Um, um, coming into the show, getting to know these characters in a, in a deeper way, and also, you know, there were some real challenges. I mean, I think, you know, the main challenge we faced this year was that Connie Britton decided that she really wanted to move on with her career. And um, I think everyone was scared about what that transition would be like. And, mm -hmm. And would people stay with the show? And I think, you know, I think people might want to talk about, might want to hear us talk about sort of what that process was like, how we sort of worked out not just the process of her dying, but really what happened afterwards, especially with Deacon. Talk about sort of what you guys sort of thought about as we faced the story of this guy and his daughters uh, picking up with their lives. I mean, I, I'm getting a sense of, uh, it's a real examination of loss, you know, mm -hmm. in the aftermath of Raina James dying. And, and I think from episode to episode, you really feel still her presence in a great way. But, you know, the absence of her presence is, is what is really, you know, heart-wrenching. And you see the struggle with all the characters. Um, and to me, that's really interesting and, and fascinating to to explore and authentic it feels to me you know right now what they're all going through yeah and it was good episode 11 which jesse's wick wrote 
um, how we go back and you see Deacon experience the moments he had with Ray, the most important moments throughout and how that affected him and um, how they started their love together and what this meant to him um, after she was passed. Yeah, I think we all felt a, a responsibility to show the reality of what it is to really grieve for someone and not sort of fast forward through it. Although we did uh, end up putting in a time jump um, between episodes 11 and 12 shortly after Raina's death, yeah. um, mostly because it seemed like it, the, you know, the grieving process is so intense in those first few months when someone passes, and we what we felt that we did want to skip a little bit into the future, and then, but we, but but not forget about the reverberations that everyone would still be feeling. Yeah, I think actually the the those last two episodes of of the first half of the season. The funeral episode and then the one mm -hmm. after, they was, those were the two most emotional, I think, of the season because mm -hmm. we really didn't shy away from yeah. how powerful this, this would really be. And the person who really felt it the most was Deacon. And, you know, we've got a clip of, of sort of him talking to Avery about what it's like trying to move on with his life. Why don't we go ahead and roll that clip? Listen, Deacon, I, I, I can't imagine what you're going through. I really can't, but at the end of the day, what's on these walls, what's in her closet, it's just stuff, right? I mean, the life that you shared, the music you wrote together, now that, that's a different story. Nobody can take that away. And that, that stuff's eternal. You know, I got to tell you, this man, Chip Eston, is such a remarkable actor. I, I mean, we've just been blown away yeah. Yeah. week after week at the work that he does on the show. Uh, you can't fake this stuff. I mean, he pays the price. And yeah. um, it's just been extraordinary watching him go through the process. And, you know, we had to be so careful in working out these storylines that, that we paid fealty to what he was going through. And, of course, people ask right away, is there going to be a new love for Deacon? I mean, that's the first question that comes yeah. up, you know. And, and, you know, and there was a lot of internal discussion about mm -hmm. that, too. It's like, do we do that? When would we do that? What would she be like? You know, that sort of thing. And, and um, you know, I, I think, by the way, one of the questions that's been asked of us is to what extent... Do we listen or not listen to what we see on Twitter or what Nashies say, that sort of thing? I mean, you know, the honest truth of the, is that we're so far ahead that yeah. Yeah. We're, I'm not sure we could respond, really, because we're, we, we are, you know, we're already writing season six, but we won't talk about that right now. Um, we might, you know, throw out a hint or two, <laughs> but, um, but we actually pay a great deal of attention. I mean, we are constantly talking about what's on Twitter yeah. and, and what the reactions are. And, um, you know, and, they're, and, and we get across the board. I think most people are incredibly supportive, but some people, you know. Feel very strongly. They have very strong <laughs> feelings. Um, you know, there's been a certain amount of talk about this Jesse Kane person, uh -huh. uh, which you just saw again in this evening's episode. Um, Talk a little bit about, you know, the thinking that went into her character. I think, I think it's important that we see these people, and they're both struggling with something so internal. She's dealing with the divorce and being a mother to her child who's going through issues with his father. He's dealing with, obviously, the, the loss of Raina. So I think it's interesting when you introduce someone like this to someone like Deacon to have something not, not only that is holding Deacon back or that scares Deacon, but also something that scares her. And I think that helps in the relationship. And there are scenes like we saw last week in the long scene at the uh, coffee shop where they're both a little scared and both hesitant to enter this. And I think that's a good place to approach it. For, I think that's where we wanted to approach it um, with these two people kind of struggling and say, I don't know if, you know, what's right or how I should do this, but d d almost just looking for a friend, I think. It's, uh, and I think That's what I, I like about it. I don't it. think we had the answers. We have the answers ourselves yet, or certainly, you know, in season five. We're just introducing this character, and let's see where it goes. And, in, in, you know, in the writer's room, let's talk about it. And, and um, I don't know that we had any set kind of, like, 
goal in mind at the end. Um, and I mean, I don't want to say anything further than that. You'll have to watch and see, but. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, just, yeah, off of, off of what Jeffrey just said. Yeah, things, things can change, you know, from, from the point at which you're, you know, pitching a story in the room to, you know, as you see it unfold on screen, you know, you may see new aspects of it or feel like you maybe want to take it into a different direction. Do you slow things down? Do you speed things up? Do you abort the mission? You know, <laughs> I mean... And, and, and by the way, you know, this cast is so passionate about what they do. They have opinions, too. I mean, yeah. we hear from them. And, and there were, there's been a lot of discussion. And I think, Jeffrey, you're right. I think we didn't have the answer. It's mm -hmm. not like we had this plot in mind. You know, we're going to do this and do that, and it's going to end up there. It was sort of, in some way, improvisational. Like, what's going to happen? Like, let's just introduce this character and see what happens. And as you said, this is someone with her own pain. Yeah. It's not like they're you know, either of them is ready to be involved. Now, Nashies, people watching, we really want your questions, and we are going to answer them. And, and, you know, thoughts on anything, especially new characters. I mean, now you've met um, um, Jesse's ex-husband. Brad Maitland. Brad who Maitland. We love. Who, you know, we love him, even though you hate him. We love to hate <laughs> him. Um, I think he's doing a great job. But we will definitely answer your questions uh, later in the show. And, you know, let's talk a little bit about Juliet. I mean, she's had oh, such Juliet. an incredible journey this year. Oh, and ag again, <laughs> this is an extraordinary actress. I just have to say, Hayden is, you know, when you're on the set and you watch this woman do the work that she does, mm. uh, it's just incredible. Just you with know? the physicality alone, to make yeah. sure, she was always making sure. Yes, just yes. The limp, for, you know, yes. from obviously the accident she was in, from the wheelchair, then and limping here. Okay, what? Yeah. how much time has passed? Am I limping now? It's... Like what's what's my pro what's my healing process and taking that into account in each scene she was she was unbelievable yes and and you know <laughs> there was a moment when Hayden called me and she said don't make me too nice <laughs> <laughs> and it was a great moment it really was because you know there is a way in which you know Juliet has to be Juliet that's part of the show mm -hmm. and. Um, I really like the fact that in the in the second eleven, she's sort of a little bit more the Juliet that we've known. She kind of came through this struggle, and so she's, now her she confidence really confidence is coming back. Yeah, her confidence yeah, yeah. is coming back, and also her difficulties. Yeah, <laughs> her, her narcissism. Yeah. Oh, yeah, her narcissism. Exactly. The, so, the great moment where she, when she comes back on stage, and she's you know built this relationship with the choir, and they're still unsure up to the last second. Yeah. If she's going to walk onto that stage and save them is, is yes. cool. It's and cool. It's, yeah. it's wonderful that she embraces that, that stuff, that great stuff that we love to write as mm -hmm. well. That's really fun to write because I think a lot of times what can happen after you play a role for a certain amount of time is you sort of buy into the, the, um, the saintliness of your character and, and yes. um, you get a little afraid of doing anything that's messy. Or, and, and Hayden isn't afraid of that. And by the way, the other thing I love is that she and Jonathan love to find the humor in those yeah, scenes. So and when yeah. you look yeah. at those scenes when they're bickering with each other, you know, you realize, oh my God, it is funny. Yeah. And they know it's funny. And, and, and yet they're not undercutting what yeah, the scene no. is about. And they're just fantastic together yeah. when they do that. Yeah. It's, it's really great. We've got a clip. Why don't we roll that clip? I want to come home. No, no you don't. As much as I want you to, I can't let you. Why not? Because then you'll end up presenting me, you'll act out, and we'll start repeating old patterns. It won't be good for either one of us. You need to get this out of your system. Yeah, but what about Cadence? She's still gonna be here. So will I. Yeah, well, she's gonna do something new, and I'm gonna miss it. I know the feeling. I love you. Call me in the morning. Okay. We are back. All right, we've actually got some questions and comments from yeah. the fans, which I'm looking at for the first time right now. Here's one you got to like. Hi, guys. Amazing episode. Thank you for all you do. That's Katie from Nova Scotia. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Katie. Hey, Katie. Much Thanks. appreciated. Now, here's a question. Yep. Okay, Katie asks, will Tandy or Teddy be back? 
Hmm. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. No, Answer uh, cloudy. <laughs> ask again later. <laughs> and uh, here's a comment. Josie from Florida says, uh, didn't think it would be the same without Raina. Glad I was wrong. Well, Josie, thank you so much. I can't tell you what that means to us because uh, it was a scary thing. It was. You know, um, yeah. she was the heart and soul of the show for four years, four and a half years, and we had no idea what was going to happen. So the fact that there is a show and a fabric of a show, even with Connie gone, even with that loss, is just, you know, means the world to us mm -hmm. that the audience would accept that. So thank you. Uh, Tracy S. Is Clay done with Maddie? I was hoping he would be her deacon. <laughs> so, guys, anything to say about that? They do. Have, they did have that dynamic. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think we deliberately kind of left it a little bit open-ended. You know, they, uh, unforeseen circumstances kind of pushed them apart, and now Clay has has uh, yeah. driven off into the sunset. It, but, but yeah, I think the incident scared him. I think he was. He wants to maybe be um, find himself in a new place for right now. We'll say, right. Talk about that incident. I mean, you know, we, we we had some interesting fan reactions to that. Um, you know, the idea of trying to do something that political on mm -hmm. Nashville is is you know you know maybe different. Mm -hmm. um, um, you know, we really wanted to, in some way, find a very balanced way of looking at something that's obviously a huge issue in the United States and a very polarizing one in the country today. I remember when we were talking about that in the writer's room and we were all very excited to sort of be able to explore an issue and um, uh, Callie I believe wrote that episode. Yep. Callie Curry who of course created the show. And I remember being in the room with you, uh, Marshall, maybe, uh, Scott, you were probably there. Some people were there, writer's room. And Callie called in from Nashville. She was working on the episode. And um, she was very uh, tormented about writing it. And she's like, uh, okay, just take a listen to this scene. And she read the scene over the phone, loudspeaker, yeah. and it was so electric and so exciting already. And, yeah. and you were like, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, that's yes. it, you know, keep yeah. going. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's fun to be able to, to tackle those issues in, in a TV show and you know, speak to what's happening today in, in our world. Yes, what absolutely. I, what I loved about how that episode was scripted is that it's, it tells a story not necessarily about something real happening because the the worst case scenario that goes through your head when you see that situation doesn't of course happen on the show but it it shows that the fear is there um the, yeah, the fear and just it, how yes. kind of out of maddie's frustration how something was nothing and then turned into something you know how something that she just saw as something that she felt was wrong turned into this it just snowballed into something worse yeah you know yeah. She, trying to protect her boyfriend right. trying to stand up for her boyfriend you know to, makes the situation so right, much right. worse and also <laughs> i think i think finally what was most interesting about that was seeing that she had one experience and he had an entirely different right. experience i right. think that was the key right. is and that getting her to understand that that she felt she could just get angry at the cops, and he's thinking, I'm going to get shot. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and he's been and, through it before. And he's been through it before. And so I think just getting that across, I think, was important. Um, some more comments. Um, uh, one of my favorite episodes, Brenda from Minnesota, Chip and Ka Ed Cast killed it. Yes, they did. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, okay. All right. Here's another question. Uh, Laura from Tennessee asks, will we ever see Gunner's brother's kid again? Or was that a storyline to prime Gunner for fatherhood? Mm. <laughs> That's interesting. Interesting. Well, when that was written, I'm sure that it, you know, this, the story where of Scarlett, you know, becoming pregnant was certainly not even uh, on yeah. anyone's right. mind yet. Right. But yeah. it is interesting to think about, especially when Gunner, um, I, I wrote uh, episode 12, Back in the Saddle Again, where... Uh, Scarlett and Gunner are finding out the results of the paternity test, and in in writing that, I was looking back at that time in Gunner's life and going, okay, how would a guy who's already been through a similar situation where there's a kid and he's asking himself, could I possibly be the father? Um, how would a how would a guy who's been through that react in this current situation? Right, and I think at the time 
when we did write that storyline for Gunner, I think it was season three or four, it was we wanted to uh, grow Gunner up a little bit. You know, we wanted to give him, we wanted to see the mature side of him. We'd seen Gunner be sort of this young, flip-floppy kind of guy, and we wanted to give him some maturity. And so, Mm. you know, who knows if that character will be back. Yeah, we can't answer that, but we can say that we're going to learn a little bit more about Gunner's childhood mm. coming up very soon yes. in the show, as a matter of fact. Um, uh, here's a wonderful question from Kathleen. Do you always know how a storyline is going to pan out when you start writing? No. <laughs> the answer is, we never know. <laughs> <laughs> we're praying, basically. <laughs> yes. Um, no, this is, this is one of the scariest and hardest things about writing is you start out with a blank page and Mm -hmm. and when you have a bunch of people sitting in a room and somebody says what about this you know the fear is that everyone's going to say what are you an idiot you know why would you even think of a thing like that (laughs) and out of that comes these beginnings you know germs of ideas that then grow into something that's more symphonic Mm -hmm. and we never know if it's going to work you know um until we see your comments we don't know if it's worked so (laughs) We, we, you know, there is a relationship between we who make the show and you who watch the show. It's very important to us, and, and the responses really do mean a lot. Um, more questions. Jeff asks, what shows did you guys watch as kids or adults that inspire your writing? Oh, mm. that's a really good question. Yeah. Very good question. What do I... Oh, wow. Well, I... Uh, there was a show called Family on wow. in the 1970s oh, that so I watched great. that was one of the first shows on television that tried to be just about real people. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the first show I did was a show called 30-something back in the 80s. And, again, it was an attempt to try to say how do real people live their lives and talk about their issues and, and, and deal with each other. And I think that informs how we try to do this show. In other words, we really try – we've tried in this season – to bring this down to earth in some way and make it be about the real emotional connections between these people. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I, I, uh, I grew up watching a lot of television as a youngster, but I also grew up in, or later on, in the theater. And uh, I, I would say that Neil Simon and Woody Allen somehow <laughs> there you go. are so crazy, <laughs> you but, you know, it. I always yeah. feel very Borscht Belt. Is, you know, that's <laughs> my influence. But... Um, I love those guys, and, yeah. and they've influenced, oh, yeah. you know. Well, Woody opinion. Allen, Woody yeah, Allen has maybe. been there, you know, regardless of what you think of him now as a person, yeah. as an artist, I mean, he's been there for me. It's like almost everything I've done, I realize, oh, Woody did that. You know, it's just, it's a little bit humbling, actually. Yeah. So yeah. what about you, sir? Uh, I keep... You- Thinking TV, I don't know why, but Wonder Years keeps popping in my mind. Oh, that makes sense. That. It's that makes sense. the nostalgia, it's the heart, and also the comedy. And it just seemed like what Kevin was going through, I was going through. I don't know. It's just, yeah, no, it that was just a really well done show. <laughs> yeah. Family stuff. Yeah. I have Sopranos more recently. <laughs> yeah. I there you go. Um, there you go. And, and yeah. I, I have to say, you're going to go, but i got to say <laughs> yeah. 30-something Oh, uh, I mean, seminal, sem- seminal uh, television thank there. You. And Great. What about oh well, you? to say mine, which is is almost similar, because I was going to say my so-called life. Honestly, uh-huh. was a show I I watched very early because when it aired, I was like ten years old, uh-huh. and then I watched uh-huh. it. Also, I I started I kept watching it, you know, as I got older, and I kept getting new layers of it because well, as a ten year old, you don't understand everything. <laughs> for, for for those of you who don't know. Uh, my so-called life was created by Savannah's mom, and and <laughs> but executive we worked produced with executive by, produced by, by Marshall Swick and myself, and it's it's one of the happiest, proudest moments of our lives. Even though it was a moment that lasted two and a half years, mm. um, for those of you who haven't seen it, we we made one season, but it took two and a half years to make it, and it was uh, just a remarkable experience. And and Claire Danes who started out at 13 working on that show, was such an astonishing oh, yeah. actress. Mm-hmm. And, so you know, you, you get opportunities like that maybe once in a lifetime to make something that really touches people that way. So um, I will always remember it. Uh, Lynn from Texas asks, how did each of you get into the show? Did you have to audition? <laughs> <laughs> well, writers don't audition. Um, um, my yeah. agent uh, yeah. sent you guys a, a, a script of mine, and the th- this is not 
the kind of script uh, they would have ever tried to send out for a show like this. Uh-huh. If if the, if if I hadn't. If, if you didn't know my mom from uh-huh. working with her. Uh-huh. Um, there was a personal connection, so they said, well, you know, your, your, your script is about teenagers. I had written a script about a goth teenager, and it was like a murder mystery. So I was like, I, that's never the kind of script you would submit to, uh, to try out for a show like Nashville. <laughs> but somehow, um, you know, it worked, and, and you guys saw something in it. I remember coming in, and we talked about this show. Yes. And, uh, and w- what we sort of both felt about the existing seasons and where we could see the characters going. Right. I mean, the honest truth is that when I look for a writer, I want to see that writer's voice. I want to see something that writer has written that's original to that person. Um, That's what's most important to me. That's why it didn't matter what the subject matter was. (laughs) It was, oh, Savannah can write. What a surprise. You know, it's like, you know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Um, and, and it was a very happy moment to see that. Um, you know, auditions for writers are about sending in scripts. That's what it is. And we read them. I mean, you know, each of you, I mean, we had seen your work on the show. Mm-hmm. How did you originally come to the show, Jeffrey? Um, submission. Uh, I had a friend who had worked on the show first season, half a uh, half the first season, and somehow got in. You know, it's it's a, a lot of this. Sometimes is who you know when you get in the room that way. You you meet the showrunner and mm-hmm. met Callie as well, and at mm-hmm. the time and um, and they gave me a shot, which I was really grateful for because I hadn't. I, I had been on a couple of shows before, but I had been mostly an actor the first part of my career, so um, newer to television writing this side of uh, the camera. And um, it's been an incredible, this show in particular has been an incredible learning experience for me personally, um, about storytelling and all of that. It's been amazing to have you with us because, you know, most of the rest of the staff were gone, the writing right. staff were yeah. gone. And so, you know, you knew where the bodies were buried. <laughs> you know, and, and yeah. you yeah. know, you have guided us in yeah. in many ways. You you know, there's so many moments where you would say, "I don't think it would happen this way," or "I don't think that person would feel that way," mm-hmm. or you know. And I, it's been so incredibly valuable to all of us. I think to have you with us. So thank you. Well, thank it's been you great to be here. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a question: How do Nashi comments impact your stories? And, you know, we talked about that a little bit before. I mean, you know, I'd like to say that they impact our stories. But again, we're so far ahead that it's usually not a direct impact, but there is an impact because we really listen to that sense of what people are responding to. I mean, look, I've made many movies as a producer, as a director, as a writer. You know, when you preview a movie, you go into this theater and you sit with an audience as it watches your movie and you learn so much just watching the audience watch your movie Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. what works what doesn't work and the same thing happens to us the comments that are on Twitter or on Facebook you know they do have an impact you know you do have a sense of what's working what's not working and and so it's like I said it is a relationship and and it affects us in the long term, like mm-hmm. what's important to the fans, what's not important to the fans. Um, even if we can't change a storyline from week to week, it still, it still definitely has an influence on us. So at any rate, um, you know, last week it was announced uh, that there was a contest um, uh, that for fans to send in a video uh, about their single most important moment of season five. Um, and the person who was going to win it was going to get to go to a Chip Eston concert, which, by the way, is an amazing thing to go to. I've been to a Chip Eston concert, and he is a remarkable performer. Oh, and this person is also going to get to have a meet and greet uh, afterwards and is going to be a guest Nashi, Nashi, excuse me, on the couch next week. Wow. Okay? Cool. And um, we have the winner. But first, I think we're going to roll that video. I feel the most important moment of season five definitely had to be when Deacon watched the video of Raina talking about how he was the strength in her life. I think Deacon never felt that, never felt that he was that man that she needed him to be. And he was. And and Raina 
confirm that for him. And I think that was very important and will give him what he needs to go on without her. It's going to be hard that Raina was the love of his life. But I think that those words really helped to bolster his confidence in himself and his ability. Congratulations, Denise Hen from Pennsylvania. I'm from Pennsylvania too, so it, Cleveland. You know, so a special congratulations, and, and uh, I think you're going to have a really good time um, uh, on that particular trip. Now, to finish this up, uh, we're going to play a game, which, by the way, I didn't come up with. And oh, luckily, God. I don't have to play, but you guys do, okay? And I think it's going to help our uh, our our fans to know a little bit more about, you know, what happens with the show. So. Each of you, I'm going to ask you a question, you're, and you're going to write down the answer. In fact, I'm going to ask you all the questions. You're going to write down all the answers, and then you're going to flip them over. I think that's one how we're doing it. I don't even it. know. Like, we'll do one <laughs> at a time, I guess. I guess if you did all, it would be stupid, so sorry. Okay. All right, so the first question, who's your favorite cast member to write for? Is, this is, we're answering for us, right? We're not, like, guessing you. Who, who you are, the, who, who most resembles you. No, the, I'm not, no. Game no, this guess. is, who do you like to write <laughs> okay. for? Like, who, who's your favorite cast member to write for? By the way, this is not your favorite cast member, because right. we love them all equally. But, you know, it's easier to write some than others, so each of you probably has an answer. Okay, and hurry up, because people are waiting, you know? <laughs> all right, so, who's going to go first? Um, I think Savannah's ready. All okay. Right. If you guys are ready, All right. flip that over. Who is it? Show it to the Whoa. camera. Whoa. Oh, I have a loss. All it's right. Juliet. I wrote Juliet. a little too small. Okay, why do you like to write for Juliet? Um, well, I probably stole someone else's answer, too, because I think she's generally a, a really fun character to write for. She's, it, it's fun to watch her being bad. It's fun to, <laughs> to watch her kind of make the, the wrong, these wrong decisions. And, um, <laughs> and, you know, she has such a great uh, sense of humor about it, I think. Yeah. Did you that's, very, that's very cool. <laughs> All right, Scott, flip it over, pal. Uh, Deacon. 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 Okay. Why do you like to write for Deacon? Um, some of my favorite moments in these past, in the, in the half, this half of season five, is Deacon, Deacon learned to be a dad. In oh. 12, helping Daphne out with the homework. And last week's in 16, two weeks ago, 16, Deacon dealing with the turmoil between the sisters and just trying to be the best dad to both of them and also trying to figure out problems. I love that part of... Uh, the show. Aww. <laughs> Jeffrey. Okay, so I've got JB, <laughs> Jeff Fordham, if you remember him. He's kind of like the male Juliet Barnes. Uh -huh. That's JB. Yeah. Then I have Will Lexington. Oh, God. This is like, you know, because you know. he's gay. Jesus. And all of them, <laughs> because they're all great. Impossible. It's like she did. I can't I cheated. ask you to she explain. <laughs> okay, all right. So now, next one. All right. You get to write a dream collaboration oh. between our cast and any artist, okay? So take your choice. It could be Deacon and X person. It could be the X's and X person. Or it could be Juliet and X person. But who would you like to see any of our cast? Per Liv people living or play? dead? Oh, my God. No, I think it has to be living. It has to be living. I think it has to be living. Because oh, no, really dead wouldn't right. be fair. <sighs> So like, basically, who would you like to have on the show? Okay. Oh. I got it. Oh. I think you, you know, we talked about one before. But I'm going to, you know, I'm going to try to fill the time here because they write very yeah. slowly. The thing about writers is they're, they're so slow. It's like, oh, oh my God, God can you turn your draft already? Oh. It's like, you know. Torture. They have to think is the problem. Okay, I've got one. Okay. Ready? Okay. So Savannah's going to go first. Here she goes. Okay, I would do the X's with Amanda Palmer of the Dresden Dolls because I've always thought they had a bit of a similar dynamic with the two sounds. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, there is no wrong. That's what you'd like to see. Yeah. Now, Scott has written a bunch of gobbledygook there <laughs> that I can't read from here. I so had. I don't even know what he's talking about. So <laughs> I had two. I, I had, had. Yes, but you're going to have to read them because we, there's no way. <laughs> Basically, I didn't know you couldn't write. <laughs> Deacon and Willie Nelson and uh, the sisters and Casey Musgraves. Oh. Because awesome. I love yes. both of Willie and Casey's music, and I think they'd be really funny and great on the show. I think they're great yes. characters. 
Yeah, themselves. we love Casey Musgraves. Oh, yeah. I oh, hope she's on the show sometime. Yeah. Yes, me yeah. too. Okay. I All have right. yeah. Gunner and James Taylor. Oh, oh. Okay. okay. Because right. um, I love James Taylor. I love Sam. And uh, I think uh, they both have amazing voices. I hear that Sam is a secret JT fan. And we almost tried to do it before. I and, know this. And it yes. didn't work out. But yeah, there was I, a we, scheduling issue. And Sam, actually, on one of our albums, oh, on the Christmas album, uh -huh. he does... Oh, it's not, a, it's not a James Taylor. He does a Joey Mitchell song. <laughs> but, Never yeah, mind. Anyway, Never mind. Same kind of... At any rate, okay, next question. Which character most resembles you? Uh, <laughs> I'm glad I don't have physically? to answer this one. Okay. <laughs> Um, um, you know, uh, I wrote mine down earlier, actually. Oh, you did? <laughs> okay. All right. So we've got an answer already. Ready? Here we go. Because I peeked over your shoulder Savannah. and I thought we were doing that first. All right. Okay. Go ahead. Right. Um, the character that most resembles me is probably Daphne, actually. Uh -huh. uh, which I realized while I was writing the episode where she runs away from school because she doesn't have her homework <laughs> and <laughs> falls in with uh, some homeless friends. Um, that's not specifically my life. But, um, but but I definitely went through some similar issues at that age, uh, depression and failing at school. So I felt like I could really bring that into it. And you did. It was really a beautiful storyline. By the way, <laughs> while we're talking about this, Lennon and Maisie, who played the sisters, are the most wonderful actors mm. and, and have grown so much this year. It's, uh, mm. it's such a joy to write for them. And, um, you know... We saw it in Lennon first. She's older. You know, she had more difficult things to deal with. But, wow, Maisie has become such an incredible actress. And she was already such an incredible singer. Mm -hmm. um, to be able to write stories for someone so young, and after all, it goes back to my so-called life. You know, she's this young teenager. It's like, it's, this, it's as if we got a new character in the show. You yeah. know, and, and it, it's sure. just, we love them both so much. So, okay, yes, sir. I... Oh God! What, is, what does it say? I I keep putting the same Deacon. Deacon. D nut. Deacon. 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 Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know. You Deacon's don't have a an dad. Like him? No, I don't. Uh, I'm a new dad. Deacon's a dad. dad. There you go. Yeah, there, there you go. go. Uh, Deacon. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I'm, yes, sir. I'm go like a, a Sam Will. Yes. Oh, I mean Gunner Will. Gunner Will. <laughs> Gunner Will. Yeah. That's sort of like who I feel like a, a mosh up, okay. mash up between the two. And and any reason why? You know, I get, I, you know, no. Okay, all right. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, Gunner's uh, kind of his head space, uh, his wishy-washiness, and he's, I think he's, he really means well, he's lovable, and, and uh, I, I relate to Will's struggle, so uh, I guess those are Cool. Reasons. Yeah. All right, one last question. Okay. And this is really a tricky one. Don't get us in trouble. Oh, okay. Okay. Season six, coming up. We're already working on it. Dream scene. What would you like to see in season six? Now, let me explain to those watching that whatever they say here doesn't mean it's going to happen. This is what they might like to happen, okay? It doesn't mean it's going to, all right? So what would you like to see? It could happen, but, you know, we're not, we don't talk about the story. So anything they say is just their fantasy. That's all. So they're, uh, they're working on it. Um, Oh, Jeffrey's got one. No. All right, ready? Go ahead. I would like to see Hawaii vacation. <laughs> yes, but the whole crew has to go. Yes. Absolutely. Well, that's why. Okay, that's I good. Amazing. We like that. And I want to be on set to produce the episode. We please. like that. Sir? Okay. You know, um, when we did the commercial last week with Will, uh, you know, that was scripted in the Southwest. And the idea was we were going to go to the Southwest to do the commercial. I mean, that's only mm -hmm. fair, right? And... You know, it was just horrible to learn that we weren't going to go to the Southwest to do that commercial. In fact, we did it just, you know, five miles outside of Nashville, and the wonders of CG made it into New Mexico. But, um, you know, it's time that we go somewhere. Yeah. I agree. All right, Scott? I have, I think it'd be cool to see Will Avery and Gunnar join forces. I love all three of their music, and it'd be cool if they came together and... Oh, played that's something a cool idea. or somewhere. Ooh. All right. That's Bam. an interesting idea. 
And I just put that I would like to see um, the two sisters sing together more because I always love when that happens. Oh, oh cool. Yeah. When they connect as Cool. Siblings. And by the way, you know, one of my fears when we went into the season was that they we wouldn't really have a chance to have them play together that very much. And we yeah. have, you know, and it makes yeah. me so happy every time they play together. I just think they're, they're wonderful. So yeah, that's cool. That's so, so listen, I want to thank each of you. You guys, you know, are so desperately centrally important to the show. And, and I'm so happy that we get to work together every day. And thank you for coming here and sharing a little bit about what we do. And um, for those Nashies watching, next week, it, um, Nash Chat is going to be back in Nashville, where it kind of belongs, let's face <laughs> it, with Amy uh, and with uh, the uh, winner of our Chip Essen contest with her on the couch. And, um, you know, I think you're going to enjoy the episode next week. In fact, it was written by Savannah by here and directed by Jesse Zwick, who is also a member of our staff. So thank you so much for joining us. It's really been a thrill to be here and can't wait to see you again. So long, Nashies. Yeah, thanks, Nashies. Thank you. Thank you.